do to make this head work. Anyone who was here during Alan Hunter's demonstration of the Johnny Depp movie, what was the name of that movie? Take a Think time. of Time. All these movies sound the same. <laughs> I mean, you remember how quickly he was able to get that head. Okay, well, pretty much at the same point with this. And we have a moonlight color scheme, which is what he demonstrated on that day as well. moon here, it's going to go green, so I'm avoiding that. Obviously, yellow and blue make green. Once they specify, um, I usually try to give them some indication of what medium I'm going to use. You know, I don't want them to come along and at the end say, there's one thing I hate and I've always hated, and that's Prismacolor. So I just make sure that there's no real surprise. Uh, that's a real good question. Seems like you really have to educate because this doesn't look like Prismacolor. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, they won't know. <laughs> no, yeah, that's true. Quite different. Very good point. I have had occasion where I say I'm going to do this and paint it in Prismacolor. And they look at me like I'm talking another language. Yeah. Well, that's why it's a good idea to have a couple examples with you. you know? Even with art directors you've worked with before, if you're using a medium that you haven't used with them before, maybe it's a good idea then to have some samples. samples. Right. Too, that as a rule, bright colors don't count for much if there aren't dull colors in the same piece. Unless you, unless you want to be just a flagrant fauvist and just use wild color everywhere, which usually is pretty scattershot, it's your grays that are going to count for as much as your strong color. Too. When I come back with more pigment, it's just as easy as can be. If I don't, if I haven't gone dark enough on a head where I want to darken down, it's easy to do. There's that mahogany red.
of you are expecting some kind of real razzle-dazzle with this color, when in fact, if the drawing is sound before you Xerox it, the whole purpose of doing it this way is so that the color can go down really fast and you can move, hand it off and move on to the next one. So, I'm going to try to get an effect this fast and meets their needs doesn't really necessarily require me to spend all day on it just because I feel guilty that it looks finished and it wasn't a lot of time. And there's no rule against mixing paint with this too. If you want to go back with some accents of, uh, of acrylic, Great. You've got a palette already laid out, or an abbreviated palette of some kind. That's that's nice. You can do that. Let's get a little fleshier tone into these two, just so they don't seem too foreign to the heads beneath them. Okay, let's take some black. So I have a pretty good base here. Now what I'm going to be able to do in a moment is start pulling out my lights and also drawing in my darks. See how black that wants to go? As soon as you put some turpinoid on it. How come those are going really black, but oh, I guess it did go pretty black in the sky? I'm wondering how it didn't go as black when you added it to the blue in the sky? This? Yeah, up there. Oh, well, partly because it didn't have any tone underneath it. That was Gary's question earlier. Would you put the tone down first before you Xerox it? Because you can put black down so readily with this, why bother? Well, you see that actually by having the tone under these heads, the hair tones that I already sketched in, mm -hmm. by doing that, just putting the same amount of black on top of that and rubbing it, 
it yielded almost pure black. By not having any black under it when I did that, it went two-thirds of the way black instead of all the way. So if I had some, you know, some streaky black uh, strokes back there, it would saturate that and get rid of black. Then. This color doesn't please me too much. It's not really color color, so I'm just going to go back with a little bit of other color and get that in. Is that mahogany red? Yeah, I guess that's what it is. Sometimes when you first apply the uh, tissue with the Prisma on it, or with the turf on it, it wants to pull up color as much as it wants to smear it. So you have to kind of warm it up a little. So are you able to write off Kleenex as it is a, as a deduction? Technically. I don't really have massive Kleenex bills. Actually, somebody got a needed eraser. I think I, see, I've got one. Hold on. Two of them. Okay. Now let's start modeling this thing a little bit. 